Hello, good morning, and welcome into First Take. You are halfway through the week. It is hump day. Skip Bayless and Molly Karam here with you in Bristol. Stephen A. joins us from San Francisco. Gentlemen, what's the good word? What's going on? How oh, y'all doing? The Golden Gate behind you. I like that. San Francisco? What? Worldwide, my, Stephen A. Oh. Well, my, 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 my services were requested, oh. Skip. I'm out here hosting an oh. event tonight in Walnut Creek with the great Joe Montana. Oh. Well, that say, say hello here. for me, if you would, to the I, greatest I, quarterback who ever played. I will make sure Thank I you. do that. Yes, sir. Big time over here. Yeah. We appreciate it. We've got a lot to get into today. Some really hot topics coming up. Why does Floyd Mayweather always have to defend his greatness? We'll share his latest comments and if they're necessary. Plus, by now, most of you have seen the high school football players who targeted a ref. But now we have new information and there's a whole other angle of this. We want to get you guys up to speed and to react. But first, we kick things off with Brandon Marshall, who on Showtime's Inside the NFL last night and the topic of conversation was Deflate gate in the battle between Tom Brady and the NFL. Here's what Marshall had to say. I think that there's three different types of players view in this thing. Number one is the fighter. I think there's guys that's in the fight with Tom. The second is cowards. I call them cowards. That's the guys that are afraid to face Tom Brady. They want him suspended. I don't believe in that. And the last type is the race card. There are a lot of players out there that believe that white players, specifically at the quarterback position, are treated differently. It's not just African-American players. I've had this conversation with Caucasian players as well. The most important part of this whole discussion is for the process is the process for the players. They just want the process to be fair and right. They just want to get it right. Marshall never holds back, Stephen A. What's your reaction to those comments? My reaction to it is that I think it's unfortunate. And the reason I think it's unfortunate has nothing to do with the veracity of his comments. He certainly makes sense, and he's absolutely right when he talks about the fact that there are a plethora of African Americans within the sport of football and those connected to players playing in the National Football League who happen to be black that absolutely positively feel that way. But that's just a microcosm of society. I mean, who, who you tell me you go on the streets anywhere in the United States of America and you locate a black man that does not believe that the rules are applicable in a different fashion to him compared to that of a white male. I'm trying to tell you, you'll be hard pressed to find one. That's just not reality. Everyone, everyone recognizes in the United States of America, particularly when it comes to white male, that there's a different standard upon which they're held. So when you look at it from the perspective of what Tom Brady, I'm sorry, what Brandon Marshall is saying from a macro perspective, he's absolutely right. But Skip Bayless, the reason why I would label it unfortunate is because at the end of the day, if you're working there for Showtime, if you are a football player within the National Football League and you happen to be black and you use the Tom Brady analogy to bring up racial disparity, it simply doesn't hold water. And these are the kind of things that hurt us in terms of addressing the issue of inequitable treatment uh, because it simply makes no sense and it doesn't hold water. When you look at Tom Brady, you're talking about an individual that is being pursued by Raj Goodell in terms of a suspension because of deflated footballs. Well, guess what? When you think about the black males that have gotten in trouble with Raj Goodell, domestic violence, domestic, you know, uh, you know assault, uh, weed all the time, you know, smoking weed, getting suspended for those transgressions, what have you. Deflated footballs are simply not comparable to that. Now, I do understand that Brandon Marshall didn't mean uh, to bring attention to deflate gate and compare it to what he was alluding to uh, in terms of bringing those comparisons into the equation. But the fact of the matter is, if you're somebody not just outside of the black community, but inside the black community, when you hear his statements, ultimately you're going to compare Tom Brady and the issue of deflated footballs to some of the transgressions some of these black players have found themselves in. And there is simply no comparison. Deflated footballs are not. Tom Brady has been a model citizen. He has been an ambassador for the National Football League. His, his, his integrity... Uh, the way that he lives his life in terms of his quality of life, how he conducts himself as a law-abiding citizen, he doesn't even belong in the same sentence as the Ray Rices of the world, the Greg Hardys of the world, you know, and others. He simply has no place being drawn, you know, have his, having his name uh, thrown in there. 
and by Brandon Marshall making the statement that he made. Although from a societal perspective, there isn't a black person worth their salt that can, act, that can even remotely deny the veracity of his comments. This was a bad example to use it from. We're talking about Tom Brady here and the issue of deflated footballs. When you talk about the fact that you know what, whether or not somebody black would have gotten away from this and all of that other stuff, it makes absolutely no sense in this argument whatsoever because the black folks that have gotten in trouble in the National Football League, it hasn't been for deflated footballs. It's been for, some would say, violent crimes. That is the difference. And I think that his comparison was misguided in this particular situation. As you know, I always defer to you when it comes to this matter on this show. I had no idea which way you were going to go, so I tried to open my mind and listen to every word you just spoke. I, I hear where you're coming from. Now, again, I'm, I'm going to look at it a little differently here. And, and I'm with you on your societal perspective. I, I get that. Now, I'll speak as a white guy here. Obviously, in the biggest picture, are there racial undertones to lots of interactions that take place every day in this country between white people and white people and white people and black people? Yes, there are still racial undertones. We know that. Okay. I accept that. I try to fight that, but, but I accept it. Now, back to this. This was a strong statement that our guy Brandon Marshall made. And I'm a big fan of his personally. You know, we've talked and talked about him. I like him very much personally. I, I appreciate the struggle he's had and how far he's come within his own personal struggle. But this was a bombshell that he dropped. And when you drop that bombshell, you need to be able to back it up and defend it. So I look at Roger Goodell's recent track record in court that he has, he has taken a beating for of late. What is it, the last six times he's lost in court? We've talked about it to, to death here on this show. So some of those cases have involved Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson and Greg Hardy and Jonathan Vilma was sort of the lead figure in the Bounty Gate, Bounty Gate case that got overturned by Tagliabue. Well, none of those guys were white, obviously, and they got, exactly. a, in the end, they all got a fair shake. So. Right. So I'm just going to throw out a, just an example here. I'm going to go to another star quarterback, a guy who probably should have won the last two Super Bowls named Russell Wilson. If Russell Wilson had been thrust into exactly the same situation Tom Brady just got out of, so far so good, Russell Wilson obviously is an upstanding citizen. He's got a clean track record within the NFL and legally. I got to tell you, Stephen A., I think he would have gotten the same fair shake from Judge Berman that, that Tom Brady got. I, I could be wrong about that, but I, I, I hope I'm not. And then I, I think of other high-profile black stars in this league with clean track records in the NFL and legally. I think of DeMarco Murray. I think of Calvin Johnson. I think of my guy, Darrell Rivas. I have high regard for these men. Who, who are role models and upstanding citizens, and if they got thrust into the similar situation Brady was in in court, could they have prevailed also? Would they have gotten the same fair shake, open mind from the judge? I think so. I could be wrong about that. I believe so as well. Okay, so it brings us well, back to what Brandon said. Man, that's a strong statement. Many times we talk about how it applies here, how, how strong I was about what Riley Cooper said he should have been cut the next day for what he... That's a whole different situation than the one that's operating here. Well, well allow me to interject. Okay. First of all, if, if, if I wasn't clear, I apologize because I agree with every single word that you say. You just said, we have no disagreement. A matter of fact, that's the point uh, that I ultimately was trying to elocute. The fact is, is that Roger Goodell has gone after white players. He's gone after black players. When he suspended Sean Payton for the year as the yeah. head coach for the New Orleans Saints, last time I checked, he wasn't, he wasn't black. When he suspended Greg Williams indefinitely, the defensive coordinator in Bounty Gate, last time I checked, he was not black. Uh, when you, when you see them sitting there going after the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft, his friend, Bill Belichick, the confiscation of a first and fourth round pick, those are not black individuals that represent the 
the face of the New England Patriots franchise, and certainly has he been in tireless pursuit of Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't happen to be black as well. And so the point that needs to be made here is while we appreciate the level of sensitivity Brandon Marshall continuously strives to, to, to display, and we definitely appreciate it in this particular instance. I think his arguments are misguided because from a macro perspective, meaning a societal perspective, whereas I think that he's absolutely right, I don't think that's a case that can be made when it comes to the National Football League. And allow me, Skip, to take this a bit further, both Skip and Molly. What I'm deeply appreciative of when it comes to the National Football League is that Raj Goodell goes after everybody equally, it appears. But the other thing is, is that let's keep in mind how some of the more upstanding African Americans in the National Football League have been mistreated by their own. When Jonathan Martin was enduring a bullying scandal with Richie Incognito, the guys within the Miami Dolphins organization seemed to side with Richie Incognito going so far as to label him an honorary brother. Now, mm. Jonathan Martin has subsequently come out and conveyed some of the issues and problems that he's had since childhood, and we all have respect and sensitivity towards that, but it doesn't negate the fact that some of his quote-unquote own turned against him. When you look at it from that perspective, that's a problem. What about Russell Wilson and people in Seattle allegedly claiming he wasn't black enough? Well, who the hell gets to make that call? He's an upstanding citizen. He's an upstanding young man. He seems to be a pretty cool brother to me. He's a high-end producer. He's guided them to two straight Super Bowl appearances and one Super Bowl title. But people were finding excuses to find things wrong with him. Those were not white people. Mm -hmm. Those were black people. Yep. And so when we look at it from that perspective, we have an obligation, at least I feel I have an obligation, to highlight the fact that far often than not, you know, the few guys that have acted up, they're not representative of the vast majority of black men, not only in the National Football League, not only in professional sports, but in our society, who actually know how to act like they have some damn sense, who actually do behave themselves and conduct themselves like civilized model citizens. And a lot of these black professional athletes are incredible, incredible role models. The few that act up stain us as a community and give the impression that the problems are far more insidious than they may actually be. So Brandon Marshall saying what he said, again, he picked the wrong case to make that argument mm. because all it has done is highlight the discrepancy between Tom Brady and the black dudes that ended up acting up. Yep. He picked the wrong argument. He picked the wrong guy. He picked the wrong day to do this. He's just, he's wrong on this. But what did give me pause, Stephen A., is that Brandon referred to conversations he's had in his own locker room and with several players around the National Football League. What the problem here is, I don't know if he's talking about five players or 50 players. It doesn't it's matter. Just, yeah. It, the reason I let, let me uh, allow me to enlighten you on this point, Skip. It doesn't matter because what he's speaking about, there are a lot of instances, for example, where guys won't sit around and get intimately you know, in depth rather into a conversation like that. They'll say, yeah, this is just another example, or they'll complain or lament the state of affairs because they know what exists from a macro perspective. But if they're dissecting incident by incident, case by case, they certainly couldn't make that argument in this instance, which is why it was a bad choice for Brandon Marshall to yeah. make in terms of picking this okay, particular The only point I will give Brandon, if he wants to go bigger picture to quarterbacks just in general regardless sure. of race yep. get preferential right. treatment in the National absolutely. Football League well absolutely they do because this game in the end it belongs to those quarterbacks that it, it is nothing without those star quarterbacks so if you want to go there I'm fine to go there gotcha yeah and I don't think that one's going to change yeah. so to surmise we both um here both of you guys understand his comments appreciate his comments but not a hundred percent on board that with this particular argument not even close moving on Floyd Mayweather